deep, but deep, but deep. That's all, folks. Miami Heat taking a 2 0 series lead on the Philadelphia 76ers. What an atmosphere it was last night, man. Boots on the ground at FTX Arena. It was a fun damn time. Would have done something last night, man. It was impossible getting out of there last night, dude. And I got there, got home at like 1 a.m. And you know, I had the wake up call 4 a.m. for the uh, for the radio show. And if you guys are looking for clips for today's show, uh, head on over to youtube.com slash Ticket Miami. Subscribe over there. You get notifications when those videos go live. I get everybody telling me, oh, I gotta, I gotta just put them on this page. No, the radio show is now on the Ticket Miami. Subscribe over there and check it on out. You'll get all the clips up there. I took out Christopher Mad Dog Russo's uh, Rats Off a Ship rant today. He got the business. New York got the business. Philly got the business. All these so-called good fan bases get the business because I am sick and tired of everybody. When the Miami Heat rise to the top, the last, the last, the last whiff of desperation that everybody goes to is, oh, look at the fan base. It's not there. They're late. I see all these snide little Philly reporters sitting by me on press row taking their little pictures. Oh, look, it's seven. It's 7.15. Let's take a crowd shot. Lots of good tickets left available here in Miami. Actually, there's not. It's a sellout. They keep selling out. They got one of the longest sellout streaks in the NBA. And you know by the time your team with your so-called good fan base is getting their ass kicked and the final nail is going in the coffin when Peppas plays the Undertaker theme. Boom. And last night it was Victor Oladipo hitting the Pepas button, which in my mind looks a lot like Ron Rothstein's button. It looks a lot like the uh, the Ron's Rewind button, but I picture it like in a glass case and there's little rave lasers that go around. That's how I picture it going. And the song's in my head as soon as I waltz on down to the, uh, to the press conference room. But look, man, this is, uh, to me... This is uh, where the Heat should be. They should be up 2-0. And I will acknowledge, I, I do want to say this. I do acknowledge that Heat have gotten a big break in this series with Joel Embiid being out. I was expecting with Joel Embiid this to be a, uh, a, a, a you know, a harder series. You know, I still... But I, I expected it to be like a close, like a lot like Celtics Nets. Closely contested with the Heat pulling stuff out. But I will acknowledge not having a, 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 a the potential MVP or most likely the, the MVP runner-up, uh, not having it was a huge deal. It's a huge deal because you know the way Eric Spolstra works on these things. He's a lot like Bill Belichick in that he likes to take out one thing, and that's the point of attack. And I don't know if it would have been Joel Embiid or if they would have focused on James Harden or what the situation would have been there, but it definitely makes things different. And he acknowledged such last night. He goes, look, of course it makes it different. So, yeah, the Heat got a break, and the Heat are where they should be. I've said that, I said this after the... Every one of the Hawks games, I'm like, they did what they're supposed to do. And right now, what Miami is doing is they're doing what they're supposed to do. Now, let's also just have the maturity Philadelphia fans who want to tune into this and, and, and actually put on their, you know, their truth ears. Let's not, let's not ignore the fact that the Miami Heat are also without their starting point guard and haven't had him for the last four games either. Let's not act. I don't even know if he is coming back for game three. That is a, that is a truth. And, and Kyle Lowry has been very, very important for this Miami Heat team. We saw them fall apart in that game three against the uh, the Hawks without him. He's a plus 51 on the court with Miami uh, in the playoffs thus far, and they haven't had him. So let's not let's not act like the Heat aren't also a little hindered here. They have had to figure some things out. Is not having Kyle Lowry the same as not having Joel Embiid? Look, if I'm grading him, obviously Joel Embiid is a better player than Kyle Lowry. He's a more valuable player than Kyle Lowry. But Kyle Lowry is still very valuable. He is still a, a, a hugely, hugely important piece for this Miami Heat team. But the thing is, is that the Heat have a team that is built to withstand this. And Philadelphia is not. I mean, they we've making fun of Doc Rivers starting DeAndre Jordan and trying to run out Paul Reed. And yesterday he's putting cork maws out there. I had a dude behind me. I mean, he was... He was a Philly fan. He was down bad, dude. He was down bad because he just kept hearing, Cork Maz, you are a bum. Hated Cork Maz. But the thing that I loved the most was when Jimmy Butler was at the free throw line. I was going, MVP, MVP, MVP. This guy goes, we still love you, Jimmy. I was like, oh, I feel bad for that guy. <laughs> but not too bad. 
Not too bad. Because I know you were calling him a bum when he left and he came down here. I know that was the case, sir. And the Heat have been able to withstand not having Kyle Lowry. And a huge factor of this has been a couple of things. One, Gabe Vincent's been just such a incredible story for his rise this year, for his able ability to just plug in there, play great defense, pick his spots to hit his shots. And you just have to give so much credit to the development that the Heat have given it to him, and really for him as well. And the work that he's put in to get to this point has been unbelievable. The other thing that's been a huge factor in this series uh, in the first couple of games, and especially was noticeable last night, was Victor Oladipo. And Victor Oladipo, I think Tyler Hero said it best last night. And I asked Tyler Hero about this after the game because he had said the previous game, a lot of people think that Vic and I can't play together. And Spo was, uh, I asked Spo about Vic at practice the next day, and he was just talking about, you know, what what a, a credit it is to Vic to, t- to really accept this role when a lot of guys wouldn't. And not only that, that he does think that the chemistry between him and Tyler get better. And then we saw yesterday with Kyle, Jimmy, and Tyler, uh, with Ky- uh, with Vic, Tyler, and Jimmy all playing together. Like, the reps do like, like it's all coming together. We forget how few games it's been. And so for, to go from a place where, you know, you have national reports saying that Victor Oladipo and Jimmy Butler – of Jimmy will not share the court with Vic. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to share the court with Vic to where we are last night where Victor Oladipo is erasing James Harden and hitting huge shots on his 30th birthday. Um, It's impossible not to root for this, and it's impossible not to feel it palpably. Like, Victor Oladipo looks like he's coming all the way back. Like, we always said that the Miami Heat, their big trade, Deadline acquisition was going to be Victor Oladipo, but it kind of looked like the dream was dead, right? And he, him and Markeith, they were out of the rotation. They weren't playing outside of the Toronto game and the 40-piece that he put up against Orlando where Jimmy didn't play and nobody played in the Orlando game. So it did look like that whole biggest acquisition thing was dead. And then Kyle Lowry's hamstring gets messed up, and he plays a little bit, and he brings a lot of energy, and he, and he starts to really turn that Hawks game with the effort that he's bringing to the table, a lot of fire. Then... Jimmy Butler's out for the closeout game, and he starts. And he was a baller, and him and Tyler get a lot of reps together. And then they get to this series, and Kyle's still not ready. And so Vic is getting those minutes, and we know what the decision was. Duncan Robinson, your time is done right now. You're out of the rotation. DNP, DNP dunks. And Victor Oladipo, he has taken that opportunity, and he has run with it. And he is looking more and more like himself, unbelievably, uh, every single game. So Tyler asked him about what he said, where he said, oh, people think him and Vic don't have chemistry, but he's like, dude. He didn't say dude. That's not a quote. You'll see the clip here in a second. He says, Vic is starting to look like himself, man. Tyler, you were speaking last game about how, you know, you think your chemistry with Victor Oladipo is more important than others do. How are you seeing that grow? Because he looks like he's just taking steps every single game he's out there. Yeah. Uh, no, Vic's, you know, Vic's playing tremendous. You know, obviously... Um, the first couple of games we came off the bench, it didn't it didn't look too good in the regular season. But um, you know we've gotten more reps. Um, we're able to play you know with each other now for a couple of games, and and Vic's starting to be back to who Vic is. Um, you know, and he, you know he's playing well. So try to try to keep him in rhythm, and um, you know I think we can play well off each other. So you can tell Tyler is uh, is very much in belief that this is going to be something that works. Uh, that he thinks can can continue to work. But here's the thing, you know, James Harden's out here and he's he's walking the aisles of the hardware store, but he didn't really know that he was in Home Depot. And when you go to Home Depot, the aisle he's going to send you to is the clamps aisle. Um, We're just trying to make it tough on him. Um, He's a great player, you know, just like Trey. And, um, you know, like I said in the first series, the talent is only going to increase and get better. So uh, we got to bring our hard hat on the defensive end. and, And that's what we're trying to do every night. You know, just make it tough on him, um, make it tough on everyone, uh, honestly, and, you know, just give him different looks. So, you know, we, we know it's gonna only going to get, you know, tougher, and uh, we just got to keep, you know, honing in on that end of the floor and letting that fuel us. The other cool thing about yesterday, which was Goosey's galore, was Dwayne Wade. D-Wade was in the building, and it was like when him and Gabrielle Union walked in, I don't know what it's like to be British. I know that we have people in England who watch this. Shout out to y'all. Um, 
But I got to imagine, I don't know what's like when royalty walks in the building and you guys are like, you know, standing for your royalty and your monarchy and God save the queen and all that. But I got to figure it's the similarity to Dwayne Wade walking into FTX Arena with his lovely wife, Gabrielle Union, because it's like their attention went right to them immediately. And it was so cool because Gabrielle Union, first of all, she's a badass fan. Like she is into it. She is cheering all the way. She's cheering on Tyler. She's cheering on Bam. She's cheering on Depot. She's cheering on uh, Jimmy Butler. You know, so she's into it. Like even when Mike Biamonte was saying, stand up and make some noise. D-Wade, he plays it cool. He doesn't stand up. He sits. You know, he's he is he's like, D-Wade, I don't got to do the thing. But Gabrielle Union, she stands up. She's like, I'm cheering for these mother bleeping heat. And I love that. I love that about them. And I love that about uh, Gabrielle Union doing that. And supporting the Miami Heat. Both of them also, by the way, wearing white hot. Shout out to them. But they were loving it. And especially when Victor Oladipo hits that three. That was like the most emotional I saw Dwayne. Because, you know, him and Victor Oladipo, very, very tight. And it's funny, man. It's funny. But uh, him and Victor Oladipo, very tight. So he's doing like the the, the three-point celebration with them. But it's funny because Victor Oladipo, this is the thing that's crazy about it. You know, for the longest time I've been doing this thing with D-Wade being the shadow president, right? Because Dwayne Wade is responsible for everything elite that's happened with the Miami Heat. Yes, Pat Riley there, but but Dwayne Wade is the is the conduit, the caveat, the key to it all. The wins, the talent, getting the championship, having that championship credibility to bring his big time teammates, all that type of stuff. Uh, you guys know the deal. You know, three championships, best athlete the city's ever had. He is our Michael Jordan. That's just is what it is. Um, but the other thing is just the relationships. Like he's continued to give to the Miami Heat. He gave by having the relationship with Jimmy Butler. Victor Oladipo, for the longest time, wanted to be part of the Miami Heat. Everybody knew. It was like the worst secret ever kept that Victor Oladipo wanted to be down in Miami. And a big reason for that is Dwayne Wade. And to see that, and and we talk about like Dwayne Wade as this shadow president in Utah, which is weird. You know, I'm happy for him. You know, you know, great opportunities for have a player like that in in an ownership position. That's huge. The league needs more of it. It's just strange that it came with the Utah Jazz and not with the Miami Heat because every time he comes back, and maybe this is an absence makes the heart grow fonder thing. I don't know. But I just feel like he's come here twice this year that I can recall. Maybe it was three times. But uh, one I remember was for his book tour, he came back. That was where Spo did the uh, the run to him and the big hug. And then, uh, and then last night. And it just feels special when he's there. It just feels, as Spo says, it just feels right. And Spo was talking last night, and he's talking about the idea of, like, I just can't get over the jazz thing. And it was my favorite part of the postgame last night. He's living the life. Front row, you know, Utah games and front row here. I was actually surprised, you know. That's what I told him out there. I said, just, I don't care, you know, what. It's it's an incredible opportunity there, but it just looks weird when he's sitting front row at at a Utah game, you know, and next to Danny Ainge. Come on. Um... But it was great to have him and uh, Gabby here in the building. I hope they are here for, for a while. And maybe uh, CB can uh, come out to a, a game as well. Because I love the fact that Spo speaks for us all, but also is in the in the realm of, like, he also just can't believe the fact that Dwayne Wade has to sit next to Danny Ainge. The same guy that Pat Rowley told to shut the bleep up and manage his own team now is managing the team that Dwayne Wade owns. But, like, D-Wade was there before... Danny Ainge got there, even though it was kind of thought of that Danny Ainge was going to go there. You know, intangibles, West Coast intangibles. And now he's got this mess to deal with Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell supposedly being a him or me thing. They very clearly never liked each other or don't vibe with each other. And I've always thought that, like, hey, you know, if Dwayne Wade is going to do one uh, final move as shadow president, it's to maneuver Donovan Mitchell to the Miami Heat. But the funny thing about that is, is like Victor Oladipo in a lot of ways was Donovan before Donovan. Like that was supposed to be like, oh, right, the guard that is going to be steered here via the connection to D Wade is going to be Victor Oladipo. And he gets here and he has the injury and it's devastating. He has to have this huge comeback. He's wanted to be in Miami this whole time and he finally gets to Miami and it's all, he has to go all the way back. He has to, he has to start all the way over. And now he's in this spot where, like, man, he looks like himself. He looks like the guy that always wanted to be here, the, Heat, the, the, the guy that the Heat fan wanted to cheer for, that we were sharpening the harpoons for. 
Dirty Whalen, dude. He was giving the goo-goo eyes to the heat in the bubble. Like, please come get me. And now he's here and he's contributing and it's awesome and it's inspirational. And I, I just, I think it's just such an awesome story. And to think that, what does this happen if Kyle Lowry's hamstring doesn't get tender? I mean, it's crazy to think about, but I don't know. And now you wonder like, all right, well, what's going to happen when Kyle comes back? Certainly there are going to be games they're going to need Kyle Lowry. Don't get me wrong. And especially I think either against Boston, Milwaukee, it's going to be important. But Victor Oladipo, make no mistake about it. It really does feel like he's going to be an integral part of whatever run this team is going to go on. As far as the rest of the series is concerned with Joel Embiid coming back, if he does come back, does come back. Look, the Heat are winning this series flat out. Joel Embiid comes back. Joel Embiid is MVP form. They come back. They're winning this series. Uh, the Heat are winning this series. Joel Embiid, I don't think he's going to be back to MVP form because he's a walking game of operation. First of all, he's in concussion protocol. Second of all, he has a busted orbital bone. Third of all, he has a busted thumb that he's already admitted has been bothering him. Fourth of all, his supporting cast member is James Harden, who is never going to win an NBA championship. And by the way, as a as a flat time is a flat circle thing, you know, if I can get all true detective on your ass, the fact that a guy in James Harden, who everybody wanted to vault over Dwayne Wade and best shooting guards of all time, shooting guard point, whatever you want to put James Harden, like it kind of molded there in the middle. But, you know, a lot of people go the way that he's he should be up there above Dwayne Wade in all time rankings. And then to you, I'd say shame on you. And I love the fact that D-Wade got to be there courtside, watch this guy be fine, just be fine. He's all right. You know, not not be able to get by people the way that he used to. Seemingly is rubbing his young teammate the wrong way in Tyrese Maxey. And also the fact that Tyler Hero, after getting sixth man of the year, which is what James Harden was back in Oklahoma City when he was 22 years old, I love the fact that Tyler Hero gets to go ball out on the same court with James Harden and hit big threes and hit clutch baskets with all those rumors that were circling. True, untrue, he's admitted that it's bugged him. And so the fact that D-Wade's there and Tyler Hero's there hitting back buckets in front of D-Wade and they're beating James Harden, mwah, it's almost poetic, dude. It is almost poetic. I, I, I just love it. So serious shifts to Philadelphia. We'll react to it. We'll see where it goes from here. But uh, we, listen, the Heat might not even, if Joe Embiid doesn't come back, the Heat might not even be gentlemanly about this. If Joe Embiid comes back, I imagine there's going to be some emotional bursts. We might have to put our monocles in and close this thing out on Tuesday. But no Joel Embiid. We might just have to go get the, uh, we might just have to go get, you know, the the, the cleaning products and sh- 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 get the dust pans out. It's, uh, it's been looking good for Miami. Really, really cool night. It was Goosey's galore in the building yesterday. I loved it, man. I loved it. 